I'm going to be using both the slicing and contouring feature to achieve this result on a Cricut machine without the use of a die cut. And you can either recreate the same results or use this method to create your own type of card. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to start off by adding a shape to my canvas. So I'm going to click on shapes on the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to be adding in two different shapes. The first of which is going to be an oval. The second shape that I'm going to add in will be a diamond shape. So what I'm going to start off by doing is taking the diamond and making it a little bit shorter so that it's shorter and wider. I'm going to then make it bigger in total and because the, the lock proportions is on, it is going to keep the height proportionately the same to the width of the object, which means it doesn't distort it or change the shape. This oval that I'm going to use, I'm going to right click and bring to the front so that I can see what I'm working with. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And now with the oval, I'm going to do the same as what I did on the diamond shape, but I'm going to drag it wider than it is tall so that it'll fit across the length of the diamond. This is the part where you need to pay quite close attention to what you are doing with this shape. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit more, making sure that the oval overlaps the edge of the diamond just a tiny bit. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And once I've achieved that, I'm going to zoom out so that I can see the entire shape, select both shapes, and select slice. Now, if the oval hasn't overlapped the edges, we will easily be able to see in this step where we click on the diamond slice result. And when we click on contour, if we can see that these two side pieces aren't separate from the design, that means that we haven't properly overlapped it on both the top and the bottom. No stress. All we need to do is undo to before we have sliced it and then make sure that we just change the overlap, select both of the objects and slice again. Then when we click on the contour feature, if they have been sliced correctly, we will be able to deselect the two side sections, leaving the top and the bottom intact. So when we click away, what that will mean is that we are left with a shape with two rounded corners and two pointy corners. Now this shape is in several pieces. So what we need to do is select all of the pieces, click combine, and then click weld to make it one solid piece. What we can do from here is, you know, you can change the aspect ratio if you want it to be a little bit shorter, the size of the shape or the shape of the shape is completely up to you. Now for the fun part of the card where we're going to duplicate this many times to create our pattern essentially. So I'm going to select the shape, right click and click duplicate. We're going to need a few more than that. So I'm going to select both of the shapes and duplicate them again until I have about five different shapes. Next, what I'm going to do is select all of the shapes that I have and play around with the alignment. So when we click on align, we will see many different options. The two that I'm going to use are center vertically so that they are all on the same line and the same aligned in the top and the bottom. And then we're going to click align again and we're going to distribute them horizontally. So that there's the same spacing between each of them making sure that once you have distributed them horizontally, that there is enough of a gap between them for what you like. And then once you've done that, you can right click and group them so that when you deselect, you don't have to keep clicking on them again. Now we're going to right click and duplicate again and line them up so that the gap between the shapes is roughly the same in between them there on the horizontal as well as on the diagonal. And again, what I like to do is select both of those and duplicate and place them roughly in the same place again. Zoom out a little bit 
select all of those, duplicate them again, and repeat the same process a few times until you have a shape that you're happy with. Now that I have roughly the shape that I want, I'm going to select them all and I'm going to distribute them vertically just to make sure that they are, you know, equally spaced apart. From here, I'm going to add in another shape, but this time a square. And I'm going to change the size of the square to be roughly the size of the card that I want to have. So I'm going to make the width 10. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio and I'm going to make the height 15. Now, of course, those two sizes are very different. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to make them quite a bit smaller just so that we're working roughly on the same size. In order to more easily work with this section of the trellis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine and weld this together so that it is all one layer and one object. It is a lot easier to work with it when it's like this, so I just prefer doing that. Next, what we're going to do is hover this over the rectangle that we've just created for the card, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and play around with the size a little bit so that there's no gaps in the edges. So the things that I'm looking at are to make sure that the shapes on the sides are all overlapping. But again, this kind of design is completely up to you. I want to have the trellis joining on that side. So I don't want to have this shape touching. So I might just go a little bit smaller and we can even select both of them and align to the center, then we know that it's smack bang in the middle. The next step is to make sure that we have both of the layers selected and I'm going to click slice so that we can choose which part of this design we want. As an example, we can pull that away and delete it because we don't want that. And then we have these three layers here. Now two of them will look the same. So we can delete one of them and we can delete this one as well. This is the layer that we will need to be able to make our trellis card and progress to the next step. So I'm then going to click on shapes again, add in another square and make this one again 10 by 15. It is in the front, so I'm going to send it to the back and I'm going to take the trellis that we've just sliced and I'm going to make that one smaller so that we have a nice edge all around. If you want to, you can also click on one of the edges and drag it up and make it a little bit taller so that there's an equal space all around the side. Totally up to you. Select both of them again, click align and center so that we have them smack bang in the middle. And then once again, we're going to select both of them and slice. So what we've done now is we've made sure that this design has a border around the edge so that everything stays together and it creates a nice rounding off for our card. And we can then just delete those two pieces as we don't need them. Now, if we're wanting to cut them on a 12 by 12 sheet, what we would need to do is make sure that it'll fit in that cutting area. If you're cutting this on your joy, then you can just send it to cut just like that, as you won't really be able to get many more on your page unless you're using the 30 centimeter mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this design and duplicate it again, because we will be able to fit three next to each other. But we will have to change the size a little bit as it won't fit on a 12 by 12 mat as the maximum cutting size is 11 and a half inches or 29.2 centimeters. My little trick that I like to do is to bring it up into the corner of the canvas and bring that one up as well and that one too. Select all of them, align them to distribute horizontally. We can see we've got a tiny little gap in between them which is perfectly fine. But when we select all of them, obviously the width is larger than 11 and a half inches or 29.2 centimeters. So you can actually just select that and type in 29.2 and it will resize it so that it will fit three on a page next to each other. If you want to fill up the whole 12 by 12, you can then duplicate this again and fit it just below 
making sure that when you select them, the height is now smaller than 29.2 centimeters, which it is in this case. So I'm going to select all six on the mat and hit attach so that they cut in this exact position. Now we have something called load shedding in South Africa, so I might only be able to cut three of them while, but just before load shedding happens. But when I send it to my computer, I'm going to click make it, and then you'll see it will show your beautiful trellis card on your mat, which is perfect. So from here, we'll just need to click continue and select the material that we're going to be cutting for our cards. I'm going to be using some foil paper as this paper is so pretty. So I'm going to select browse all materials and here I'm going to type in foil and search for foil paper. And once that's done, I'm going to load it onto my mat and we're going to cut the foil paper and make our card. I am going to be using my light grip mat for this. So we'll need to just remove the protective sheeting. Choose the color of foil paper that we want to use. Place it within the sticky area of your mat and use our brayer to make sure that it is stuck down properly. You absolutely can rather use your standard grip mat if you prefer. Either of them should be perfectly fine. Your light grip, you'll need to make sure that it's a relatively new and clean one, or you could use a normal standard grip. And then we're going to insert it into the machine and let it cut. And now that it has finished cutting, we can tip our page over and pull our trellis boards away from the mat, seeing all that's left behind. And here we have our perfect trellis board that we can put onto our card, cut our card down and continue to decorate. And then we'll be able to create an amazing card just like this one. Please don't forget to subscribe for more Cricut videos in the future. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.